Hello friends, welcome back. In this video, we will look at the tracking data extract uh, within Automation Studio. So we have to go into Create Activity, Data Extract. Now, earlier we saw how we would actually export data from a data extension, right? But uh, we also have the option now to like, you know, do a tracking extract. So what is tracking extract? Um, as part of our email send um, and communications that we send out from Marketing Cloud, we actually track uh, the, the, the different uh, statuses of like the subscribers, uh, the email send jobs, uh, like were there any bounces, was how, how did the sends perform, was there any opens, the clicks, uh, etc. So all of this actually comprise um, and then would give you the data about tracking, right? So if you want to like, you know, uh, use that data uh, from Marketing Cloud and send it out to an external system, uh, we use this particular tracking extract, uh, data extract activity, okay? So let me go ahead and then just configure this here. Let's call it monthly uh, tracking extract. Okay. So I'm just gonna name it as tracking extract with the month and the year because I'm just doing it on a monthly basis. Uh, you can define uh, the file name uh, depending on how you actually would run it. Uh, if it's a daily, weekly, uh, depending upon your use case. Uh, one thing you need to note is it's actually a .zip extension. Uh, the reason is uh, you will uh, be having multiple files generated and then uh, consolidated within the single zip file. So we can see that in this next page here. So as you can see on this right hand side, whatever you see under the uh, extract option checkboxes, each of that is a different uh, CSV file that will get generated if you opt for it. For in this particular case, if I have actually a bounces and clicks checked, then it'll actually have a separate CSV file for bounces, another one for clicks, another one for open, sent, etc. So uh, the include primarily it, uh, is not a separate file. What it actually means is uh, include additional data for some of these extract. For instance, if you are extracting uh, subscribers and if you use this include all subscribers, what it actually means is don't just show me the subscribers for this particular date range or the time range that I've given. Uh, include everybody on there. Right? If you don't include it, it will only return the subscribers who have some activity during this particular period that you're specifying. So that's how you have to like look at like you know what's your use case and then choose what are the tracking data that you want to like configure and then what are the specific um, like you know inclusions that you need to have and what you need to exclude. For example, if you are looking at unsubscribes, like you know, so you can have unsubscribes and if you want to know uh, the specific uh, unsubscribe reason, you can include that. Uh, if you're using uh, extract clicks, uh, you want to know what it, you want to make sure that you have the unique clicks are there, and even for the opens, you want the unique opens. So you can actually go ahead and specify that. They won't create separate files, but those information will be uh, included in each of these uh, files uh, as they get generated. Okay. Uh, the time ranges that you have here that you see on the left, rolling range and specific range. So rolling range is nothing but like you have a time range of like either one day, seven, thirty, sixty, or ninety days. You can go specify that. Uh, so we'll just use 30 days for now. The specific range is like if it's a 30 day range, you can actually say, okay, I want it from January 1st to January 31st, okay, or 30, 30 days, uh, or the February timeframe or the March timeframe. So you can actually go ahead and specify which time frame do you want that. Uh, preferably if you're running for an automation, I would just go it for the last 30 days and then hope to like run it uh, on the last day of every month or like the first of every month, right? And then uh, the account IDs, if you leave it blank, uh, it actually default to the the BU uh, ID of this particular BU that you're running it from. Uh, if you want to like include all the or uh, BUs in your uh, org, you can actually specify it with an asterisk. Uh, or if you have like you know specific account IDs that you want to like you know be a BUs that you want to get data for, uh, you can specify that using a comma. Okay. Now, uh, if you have uh, want to like you know get tracking data for a specific email send, like not all the e emails that were sent out for a specific one, if you want to like extract data out, you can go ahead and get the external key of that particular email send definition, and you can specify that here. Okay, uh, and you can specify the different formats and how you want. Uh, usually, we go with the CSV format because it's easier to work with. Uh, you can also specify the send IDs. So sometimes like you know, for the jobs that, uh, that you have, like you, know, you have send IDs that you can configure, not just the s email send definition. So you can use both of them to filter and then extract specific data for email sends. Uh, the code text here is like if you uh, want to specify anything other than a double code, uh, you can go ahead and, and use that along with the text qualifier. So if you want to use a single code as the text qualifier, you can use that. Uh, by default, if you leave it blank, it'll actually go with the, the double code as the, uh, the code text field. 
Next, we'll actually just give you the summary of the configuration. You can go ahead and save that, and then uh, you can run that separately as a an auto in an automation workflow. Uh, to schedule it, uh, you just you know go ahead and use it with the scheduling entry source, and then you can run it every month, um, and depending upon your use case. So that's a high level overview of how to export tracking data using data extract activity in Automation Studio. Uh, hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching.